Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Flasks in the Old West. Let's talk about it. Flasks is a subject that is near and dear to my heart, or my hip, uh, well, wherever I carry it at the time. They are meant for the person on the go to have a quick little nip of his or her alcohol of choice. Yep, I said her. It's no secret that some women would carry one in their reticule during the Victorian era. Uh-oh. Some were plain, some were decorative. It wasn't uncommon to see a flask embossed with the saloon's name and address. Heck, you don't want to forget where you got the booze from. In the collector circle, the Wild Frontier has its own category named Western Glass. The large variety of bottles that have been found give credence to the fact that our old Westians were enjoying their spirits. I have collected a few historic ones and take them to some events. However, I'm no serious bottle collector, so forgive me if I miss something here. Going back through the ages, we see flask materials from pottery all the way to pewter. Silver was a fancy one, and the most discerning gentleman would no doubt have one of those. This is a dug flask with the marking warranted on it. Its shape is what is known as a Union Oval. It's 14 ounces, and I bought it because the neck is a little crooked. If you've seen enough of this channel, you know that I am fond of misfit collectibles. No child wants to play with a Charlie in the box. The warranted, full measure, half pint, and guaranteed embossing that can be found on these flasks puts them as early as the 1890s. That Union Oval shape, however, goes back to the start of the Civil War and into the 20th century. They have different characteristics that range from pharmaceutical straight-sided to the liquor-toting strap-sided. These have to do with a band that goes up the sides of the bottle. Other common flask shapes are shoe fly, Olympia, coffin, dandy, teardrop, picnic, eagle, and pumpkin seed, to name a few. Bottle makers put different ingredients in the glass to produce different colors that would appeal to the public. Black, green, amber, blue, and aqua are results to a reaction of an additive and the amount of iron in the sand the glass was made from. The pinkish purple bottles you see in antique stores is a response of the manganese dioxide in the glass to UV light. This was known as colorless glass back in the day, and the manganese was added to clean up some of the impurities in the sand. A hundred years of UV exposure can really make a colorful bottle, huh? Manufacturers like Olry & Company from Philadelphia produced a glass flask with a removable pewter cup attached to the bottom, just in case you want to share with someone. Some flasks even had a leather jacket that went along with them to protect the glass. They even have a little window in them so you can inspect the liquor level. If you want to carry a historical flask at your 19th century events, have no fear. There were so many produced that they really aren't hard to find. Modern flasks are usually made of stainless steel and, although common, aren't correct for the Old West era. If you already have a modern one, don't let that discourage you. Just keep your eyes peeled for an older one to add to your collection, providing you can see through your eyes. Well, folks, thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Hmm. You squid mode? I might be. I hear you, uh, you peddle some Michigan rye. I might sometimes. What do you, uh, what do you got in trade for it? Arizona coffee. Now that sounds like a good trade to me. I'm doing business with you. Yeah.